Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to the Committee of the Whole meeting for uh, August 30th. Um, we have um, 14 items on our agenda. A couple of those are informational. Um, I've been told that on item number 11, uh, that the um, party that wanted to uh, speak about that is stuck out of town or is not able to be here today. And so I um, would ask that that item be held until uh, next month so uh, if, uh, we can note that. And then uh, also there is an additional item, um, we'll call that item number 15, which uh, I believe the uh, members have on their desk. Uh, this is the uh, award of bids, which was just uh, done uh, and received today, and it is for the demolition of Sturz Valley seed, Feed and Seed, and so if you can um, add that to your list. Um, I've also been asked to pull item 8, and so uh, with that, uh, what are the wishes of the committee? Uh, seconded for consent on uh, the remaining items. Uh, so for those of you in the audience, if, if you're here about um, one of these items in particular, what, what we have is a motion to pass all of them as the recommendations came out of the staff, except for item eight and the uh, two informational items which we'll, which we'll hear. So if anybody wants any of those other items pulled, please speak up now if you can let me know. Um, otherwise, they'll be passed the way the recommendations came from the staff. Chairman Chap, I request pull items uh, 6 and 7 and 9 and 10. 6, 7, 9, 10. Okay, so we've got 6, 7, us to item number six, which is the Family Homeless Shelter RFP authorization. Is there a motion? Um, moved by Olson, second by Wolski. Um, discussion? Alderman Wolski for this. Uh, question for Mr. Bacon. Okay, John. Yeah. I could lean in for Although I do have a loud voice, so. <laughs> um, it normally to do this um, through a subrecipient agreement with a willing nonprofit. Um, this is kind of unusual as a preface to answering your question, but prior to my coming here, there had been very good, extensive conversations with a number of the nonprofits that would be interested in all of Um, I, at this point, have no sense of what the response will be. I can share with you that um, following all of your guidance in terms of being transparent, um, we did have a meeting several weeks ago with the various organizations that have been part of the Vulnerable Populations Committee. Um, Alderman Pajagula was at that meeting, um, and thank you. Um, 
And uh, there was a good give and take, um, clearly a sense there, and I had the same you know, transparent conversation that these are the options. Um, and clearly, this is the way they want to go. Um, I can say to you that we're on a timeline that um, if for some reason um, we don't get the number of quality responses that we might want to, um, we're still well within a timeline <clears throat> to meet a 2018 target. Um, if we were not to get any positive responses or any sufficient responses, we could then go the subrecipient route. And what I would then do is immediately re begin reconvening all those parties that are involved and begin a dialogue in terms of identifying one or more that might want to be partners. I would say, based on the feedback I've been getting, that I would not be surprised if we do get some responses to the RFP. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, Seeing none, thank you, John. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion uh, by the committee? Seeing none, please call the roll. Olson? Yes. Quadragula? Yes. Sitma? Yes. Strait? Yes. Wolski? Yes. Barney? Yes. Jancer? Yes. Uh, item number seven, affordable single-family single housing lots in resilient neighborhood RFP. Is there a motion? Olson. Second. Second by Wolski. Discussion. Alden Wolski. Chairman Jasper, thanks. Uh, Mr. Zakian, once again. Uh, he didn't go far, of, sir. Almost, I was almost going to stay and stand. But I figured, okay, protocol, I better sit down. But. <laughs> uh, kind of just vetting out the numbers a little bit here. Sure. Uh, if, if I remember back to the application, I think we had, we had said we were going to deliver approximately uh, 180 units. Yes. Um, with the, the project up on South Hill, I, I can't think of the name of it. Park Seth. Yep. Uh, we've got a number of coming out, of, coming out from that, that total there, and we're adding another 35 to that. Is that correct? Yes, and we still, we still will have sufficient capacity um, to do more. This will not be the final RFP. What we're doing, we're doing this not in baby steps, but not in mass. Um, and again, it's cognizant of the marketplace on how conditions have changed in the past two or three years. So we don't want to overwhelm the market. And what we are doing, trying to do is focus on rehab rather than new construction, which is what was primarily envisioned in the original application. So yeah, we're doing, it's 35 currently in Park South. Um, always a little levity. Um, I have twice called it South Park, and of course if any of those that are current kind of knows that's not a good thing to call Park South. So. I've gotten very good at calling it Park South. Um, and then 35 of this one. Continuous. Yep. Uh, John, your conversations with, uh, with, with those in the real estate market uh, are, are comfortable with what you're talking about in this proposal? You know, obviously the things have changed here in town. We've got a, a lot of properties out there. Um, the concern that we're not kind of overdoing this and, and maybe creating a little bit of a burden on, on the private sector, we're, we're pretty confident this is a good number? Yes. Um, and I want to correct something. I'm, I've got, we've got, we have so many RFPs on the, on the street, I don't want to confuse you. This RFP is for single family homes. I was talking in the context of multifamily homes. Um, taking a step back, uh, and by the way, that RFP is due September 15th, just a little advertising for the, for the multifamily, and that is for another 35 units. Um, this RFP is the result of extensive conversations with a number of stakeholders, including all the brokers. Um, we are constantly now getting updated information from the Minot Multiple Listing Service in terms of what trends are and current patterns are in terms of what is out there. Um, length of time that the houses are on the market, again, to make sure that we don't overwhelm the market. Um, we have pledged, I believe in total for this, it's about 175, 180 units. Um, we do have flexibility going forward of maybe doing a mix and match between trying to help the market of homes that are, not on, that are on the market not selling and also doing new homes. We came to this figure of 35 in discussions with the brokers and with the bankers and other financial institutions. We had several meetings with them as well. Um, 
35 was a number that everybody was comfortable with. It also keeps our underlying commitment to HUD in terms of what we said we would do, even though conditions have changed. Um, and we believe we are going to get good response to this. I apologize for confusing the RFPs. Okay. Any further questions? Thank you. Um, any discussion? Committee? Okay, seeing none, uh, call the roll, please. Olson? Yes. Pontagula? Yes. Sitma? Yes. Strait? Yes. Wolski? Yes. Barney? Yes. Jancic? Yes. Um, item eight, um, central polling locations. Is there a motion? I'll move. Move by Padre Gula. Second. Second by Sipma. Uh, discussion. Alderman Padre Gula. Is Mr. Lakefield the person, the point person on this one? Uh, he's coming <coughs> forward, so I guess he is. Thank you. So I figured. Um, I had two questions, Dave. Um, this was initiated, I take it, by Deborah at the county auditor's office. This request, Mr. President, uh, Alderman Padragula, that is correct. Okay. Um, the two questions I have, or two concerns, I guess. Um, the first, um, you know, I, I'm certainly willing to sacrifice some in terms of, you know, neighborhood polling places. We've sacrificed neighborhood schools, you know, and I, I like the idea that you pointed out in your memo of uh, this being near near the bus route, stop point, transfer point, which I think is good. It's a nice central location, handicap accessible, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the concern I have, though, is um, with early voting in the past, it's taken place at the county office building. And I presume that's still Deborah's plan? That is correct. Okay. If you could talk with her, please, about that. I, um, I, I've had numerous concerns expressed to me about the parking problem at the courthouse, even during good days. Um, it's hard to get a place to park, but when you have several thousand people coming for early polling, early voting, uh, it becomes almost impossible. I experienced that, uh, and other people did too. And I, I don't know which would be more awkward for them to move their early polling to the um, uh, auditorium or have people circling the block forever. But I, that is an issue they really need to deal with. And if we're going to do them a favor, in a sense, by making life easier, by having a central polling place for our city, um, you know, I think they need to pay attention to that parking issue. Um, you know, again, it may be more awkward for them to, to do the early voting at the auditorium, but um, I, I'd like you to talk with them about that at least, because at the courthouse administration building, it, it's a real issue. Um, so, you know, and then one of the advantages, as you point out in your memo, is there's lots of parking at the auditorium. Uh, so that's a plus, and let's see if we can maybe use that more for early voting. Um, last time, I believe it was for an entire week. Um, it's a lot of people. Um, the other question or concern I had is, do you see any other um, negatives? I mean, obviously, there are positives about having um, the polling place centralized. Do you see any problems for the city or for the average citizen? Uh, President Chancer, Alderman Patagula, one of the potential drawbacks is it, it potentially could be further for someone to travel to the polling location, um, and that is one of the items that has been discussed. Uh, Deborah has pointed out that it is becoming more and more difficult to find um, accessible polling locations for uh, reasons of accessibility. They used to have a number of schools that they used as polling locations. Uh, they aren't able to do that anymore for a variety of different reasons. Um, they used to use a number of <coughs> church facilities for voting, and those are... are getting to be less and less of that just because of the layout of those particular facilities. Um, so there, there's been a number of different things uh, that have weighed into this request. Uh, one of the other items is the number of poll workers that are required. Um, some of the issues that we see with overlapping and differing um, uh, districts, whether it's legislative districts, um, now that we don't have wards in the city that reduces at least one of those layers of complexity, but you still have uh, people that live inside the city limits, outside the city limits that may all be voting at one polling location. Some of those pre-existing polling locations had people outside the city, inside the city, several different legislative districts. So by having it all centrally located, uh, if someone 
it reduces the possibility that someone goes to the wrong polling location and it gives them the opportunity to identify some of those issues in this process and to be able to help them and streamline that procedure. Um, so I think there are some, some positives. Obviously there are some uh, things that have to be weighed against that as well. Um, one of Deborah's uh, main items she said is because it streamlines it without having to have judges at each location, obviously it reduces the cost of conducting the election as well. Okay, any other questions for uh, finance director? The other uh, comment I guess I wanted to make is part of the reason for polling this is so the public is aware of it, we're going to go to that centralized location. I think for the past few elections it's been that way, but um, this makes it more ongoing and I think people need to know about that. Um, I personally am not thrilled about it, but I think, you know, I'm not, th I'm not upset about it, put it that way. I think there are significant advantages. I just want to make sure that people are aware of that and have a chance to think about disadvantages and, uh, you know, if they could do something for the early voting, because that's becoming an increasing um, uh, way in which people vote and, and um, you know, I, I don't want to make it more convenient by having, you know, the regular election here and then have people have to wait at the courthouse and administration building. So, thank you. Mr. President, Alderman Padragula, too, just to clarify a little bit, I don't think the county has taken any action, or there hasn't been any other action. She just wanted us to bring this information in front of the council to see if that is something that they would consider. Um, there's a number of items that would have to be worked out to make this um, come into operation. Um, so that is something we would have to address moving forward, but uh, we just need to have to find out if that is the direction that the, the council is wishing to take. Sounds good, thank you. Okay. Any other? <coughs> Alderman Sipma? Just one follow-up comment, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, just when we talk about accessibility, one of the other options that we just haven't talked about uh, when, com when it comes to concerns of accessibility is absentee voting. That is always out there for the general um, elections. So if somebody is concerned about that, that absentee voting is easy to do. I've done it myself. My impression has been that uh, the elections where we have used the, uh, the auditorium as the single polling place have gone well. And um, so I, I don't know that this um, poses insurmountable problems, but I, I appreciate you know, the, the thoughtfulness of you know, trying to accommodate everybody, uh, both early voters and, and people voting on the election day. Any other comments? Alderman Wolski? Yeah, I just add a, a quick comment. I, I think this is a, a, a wise move. Uh, simplify the process a little bit for everybody. I, uh, over the past few years, I think I've taken several phone calls uh, about people who were confused about voting in the wrong location. And kind of just as the memo from Mr. Lakefield explained, so I, uh, I think moving forward, this is a a good way to maybe hopefully increase a little voter engagement and, and citizen engagement. Alderman Pottergula. I agree with that too. Um, and again, I wanted to make it maybe a little bit even simpler to have just one place for early voting or regular voting. Um, yeah, I think it'll help. Okay. <coughs> Any further discussion? <coughs> All right, seeing none, we're ready to vote. Uh, for all the roll. Pottergula? Yes. Sitma? Yes. Strait? Yes. Wolski? Yes. Barney? Yes. Jancer? Yes. Olson? Yes. Okay, that brings us to item number nine, uh, construction engineering, um, swift action, <coughs> C, levy repair, and bank stabilization. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Wolski. Second. Second by Strait. Discussion? Alderman Wolski, I guess you pulled this, yeah. I, I did, Chairman Jancer. Uh, I think maybe Dan would be the appropriate individual. Dan, uh, we had this last month and it's, it's kind of here again with us uh, procedurally for I, I guess a couple different reasons, but over the last month I've thought about this a little bit um, and I'm, I guess maybe I'm, I'm starting to have concerns about the way we are spending out of our half penny of sales tax. Um, it, 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 is this type of spending appropriate given the joint powers agreement with, that we have with the SRJB in the terms that we've kind of allocated a half penny? Uh, I haven't seen that agreement, so I guess maybe what I'm asking for uh, is, is your, your thoughts and comments 
and then maybe uh, uh, an opportunity to take a look at that agreement and, and maybe have Kelly take another look at it before uh, this coming Monday in terms of uh, making sure that we're, we're we're right on the rails in terms of what we're supposed to be. Mr. President Alderman uh, Wolski, I, I'll certainly get you a copy of that agreement. Um, the the engineering for the SWIFT item, it doesn't have anything to do with the Sears River Joint Board. That is for our work that the city is committed to doing um, for our existing levy system. So it, it doesn't, uh, the, the Sears River Joint Board isn't isn't a part of that. And I think that's, uh, if I may, Chairman Giancio, I think that's my larger concern because we are funding this work uh, out of the half penny of sales tax, which I, I think we have sort of earmarked in a sense for flood protection uh, to the SRJP. Again, I'm, I'm, I haven't seen this agreement, so that's why I just want to do a little bit of a review prior to Monday to make sure that, 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 that we aren't getting a little ahead of ourselves in terms of how we're spending that. Sure. Mr. President, Alderman Walski, I'd, I'd be glad to get it to you. Um, I believe the half cent says that it can be used for flood protection which this certainly is. It is our existing flood protection that we have until the larger Mouse River Enhanced Flood Protection is built. Um, I, I believe, and I'm just going from recollection of the agreement we have with the Surge River Joint Board, it says that the half cent sales tax will go towards paying the local share and it only commits the city to that amount going toward the flood protection project. I don't believe there's any stipulations in there, you know, stating that it can't be used for our existing flood protection. So, okay. Okay. Very good. Any other questions for uh, Public Works Director? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm straight. Thank you, President Chancellor. Dan, the, the two figures cited here, uh, the, the grant from the State Water Commission and then the sales tax dollars with the 50-50 cost share, uh, how much are we, can you just remind us how much this will cost, this one particular item? Are we going to spend that full $1,975,000, 2000000 Mr. Chairman, uh, Alderman Strait, the, the total estimate of, for engineering and the construction work and everything was uh, the 1970 thousand. When we submitted the application to the State Water Commission, that is what they based their cost share on. Um, Pre-engineering cost, they paid 35% of that. Uh, the construction cost mm -hmm. was, I can't, 50% or 60%, and then the construction engineering was 50%. There was about a $17,000 item out of that $1.9 million that they didn't feel was eligible. It was clearing and grubbing and they didn't want to participate in clearing and grubbing. So that's how we got to the 950,000 um, cost share from the State Water Commission. So it's, it's not an exact 50-50 cost share, but the engineering on here, which is uh, the total budget amount is 180,000, that is eligible for 50% uh, cost share from the State Water Commission of this $950,000 grant that we got. Thanks for the clarification. Okay. Any other questions for the Public Works Director? Seeing none, um, any other discussion amongst the <coughs> So if not, uh, please call the roll. Wolski? Yes. Barney? Yes. Janser? Yes. Olson? Yes. Padrigula? Yes. Sitma? Yes. Straight? Yes. Very good. And did we pull number 10 as well? Okay. Uh, is there a motion? So moved. So moved by Wolski. Second. Second by Strait. Discussion? Alden Wolski, did uh, you have something further on this? I don't have anything further. I just wanted these two pulled together because they were kind of connected. Same. So, okay. Yep. All right. Very good. Um, anybody else? Seeing none, call the roll. Wolski? Yes. Barney? Yes. Janser? Yes. Olson? Yes. Hodgewood? Yes. Sitma? Yes. Straight? Yes. Very good. Um, <clears throat> that brings us to item number 12, informational item regarding uh, requests for uh, 
Service River Joint Board design changes, considerations, etc. Um, I guess is somebody wishing to speak to this, uh, Dan? Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, um, I just brought this forward. I had a request from uh, one of the aldermen to to bring it back, just so the committee had an update as to the actions the Sewers River Joint Board did or didn't take. Uh, basically, I, I think I've summarized the discussion that was held at the Sewers River Joint Board on the options that were brought to them for consideration. And uh, like I said in my memo, there was no action taken on it, uh, but they felt that the items uh, weren't flood protection related and uh, should probably look for a different source of funding. Okay. Um, so at this point then um, I would take it that uh, the uh, plans would remain unchanged from uh, what they were previously and those items would not be included unless um, a different funding source were found. Is that a fair statement? That's, that's correct. Okay. All right. Alderman Walski. I, I might add uh, a, a couple thoughts to this conversation. Uh, Alderman Strait and myself were down in uh, Bismarck on Wednesday with the uh, State Water Commission uh, meeting and, and uh, very happily uh, Minot was awarded the, the $63 million or the, or the Water Commission approved those dollars for us. Um, following that meeting we did, uh, Alderman Strait and myself were allowed, available to sit in on a kind of a a more high-level engineering meeting, and uh, I think at, at the initial direction of, of council, some of those aspects in terms of the trails and things have, have already been kind of put into the engineering uh, documents in some respect. Um, so uh, I, I appreciate Dan's update here today, uh, but I, I, short of some formal action from the SRJB, there isn't very much here for us to consider. Any further questions uh, for Dan or discussion on this item? Okay, I guess. Thank you, Dan. Um, next item 13, we have a uh, update on the Broadway Bridge project. <coughs> Mr. Lem. Okay, thank you, um, Mr. President, members of the committee. Thank you for allowing me a few minutes of time to do this presentation. My name is Mark Lyman. Um, I'm with Audney Advertising here in town. We were hired as the public information officer for the Broadway Bridge Project. I'm the primary contact for the public, the businesses, and others when it comes to information related to this job. We were hired as per the uh, North Dakota Department of Transportation's job specifications under the contractor for this job, which is Lunda Construction. And I'm doing the presentation today at the request of City Engineer Lance Meyer. So, um, and it, please, if there's any questions as we go along today, if you want to just stop me, go ahead. If not, the, we'll get to some Q&A at the end of the presentation as well. It should only be a few minutes. Um, quick project overview, real fast. The project is a complete bridges replacement project. I say bridges because there are, there are actually two bridges that make up the Broadway Bridge. We, we always call it the Broadway Bridge, but again, keep it in your head, and, and we've had... A lot of people say, well, you're demoing both bridges at the same time, isn't it one bridge? So a little bit of confusion there, but it is two bridges. And what that allows us to do is to demo uh, the East Bridge um, and replace it this year uh, while keeping traffic head-to-head -head on the West Bridge. And then we just reverse that in um, 2018. So construction did start on this job in late March of this year. And uh, to date, uh, due to the footprint largely, has had a minimal impact on businesses in this area. Um, as I've already said, London Construction out of Wisconsin is the general contractor on the job with a number of in-town and out-of-town subcontractors. The bulk of the funding to replace the bridge is coming from the Federal Highway Administration. Um, as we all know, US 83 is a federal highway. I um, wanted to show you an early artist rendering of the new bridges or what the bridge would look like. This imagery was produced early in the design phase and so a few things did change after this point. Primarily the color of the bridge, it's not going to be white. Um, it'll be a tan or a brown 
uh, that will be similar to the flood walls uh, that are being built um, in that area as part of phase one of the enhanced flood protection project. You'll notice that the pedestrian walkway is on the east side of the bridge. That will be the only walkway on this bridge. Um, it will be wider than the previous uh, walkway and safer. Um, not seen in this rendering, but also in the final design is an overlook area um, in the pedestrian pathway that kind of bumps out over the uh, Suris River uh, where the bridge crosses over the Suris River. So it allows a pedestrian to stop and um, <coughs> take in the view if they would like. Um, just uh, covering real quickly the current status of the, of the job. This picture is actually from the rooftop at Ike Keating. They were nice enough to not push me off the roof while I took the picture. So uh, you'll see there the, the various piers that are in place. Um, there are uh, in the abutment there right on Central Avenue as well. The two cranes that are there um, and the work that is, is started to become even more visible uh, there in line in the eyesight with the, um, with the drivers. Um, we uh, are currently in si the sixth month of construction on, on this site. Um, the substructure of the bridge, which I said uh, does have six new piers, two abutments, and then the north and the south approaches uh, is substantially complete. There is concrete to be poured um, in those approaches. Uh, that will be done in the next four or five weeks. Um, the work now is shifting into the final months of construction. The contractor does anticipate delivery of the bearings and the girders uh, or the beams over the next four or five days. That's going to be the uh, the parts of the bridge that were more commonly, uh, we understand there's, there's spans that go over the piers. Um, those are coming from a supplier uh, a little later than they anticipated. That's why they're a little bit behind schedule on, on that component. We do anticipate those to, um, to start placement of those after Labor Day. Uh, the concrete deck or the roadway will follow after that and the contractor does anticipate being done with the bridge to allow the driving public on it by uh, end, of October or be, uh, end of October or beginning of November, uh, essentially before winter settles in. Because um, as they say, winter is coming. So uh, just taking a quick look at the latest construction photos. Uh, this is 25 feet up in the air, um, right in line with the old bridge. Uh, this is pouring one of the caps on top of one of the substructure pours. Um, on the south side of the river. Um, just kind of briefly illustrates some of the work that goes into it. Um, it is safe up there. Uh, they take all the safety precautions uh, that are necessary, um, but it is a, a detailed job um, and a lot of work to be done. Uh, and then the last photo I'll show you and then any questions that you have. This was uh, evening work done this spring, um, removing the old concrete beams from atop uh, an area of the bridge right over uh, the river. So. This was a coordinated effort uh, that did require some impact to traffic. It was about 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night when they were doing this work. So uh, that concludes my presentation. Give you a quick update on the Broadway Bridge Project and I would take any questions. And if I can't answer them, I've got the others here who will help me out. So. Okay. Mayor Barry. Uh, thank you, President Janser. Uh, Mr. Lyman, I just have a quick question <coughs> on the impact on businesses at Central. Uh, will access to Central next year, uh, will there be able to, like saying going north on Broadway, will there be able to turn onto Central to have access to the downtown? Yep, uh, Mr. President, uh, Mayor Barney, yes they will. Coming uh, from the south or traveling north, you will be able to take a right-hand turn onto Central Avenue. Okay. Um, so, and I, I say that very specifically, you won't be able to, from the north traveling south, you won't be able to take a left-hand turn onto Central Avenue, and, and one of the primary reasons for that is the new bridge, in order to meet the specifications required for the railroad clearances, the new bridge is actually coming up about a foot, foot and a half higher than the old bridge. And since the old bridge is staying in place on the west side, at least for this winter, and the new bridge is there, including the concrete approach that's there at Central Avenue, that foot and a half gap, uh, there's no way to safely make that um, an accessible uh, intersection for people coming from from the north wanting to turn left onto Central Avenue. So that will be um, it, it'll be a it'll be less movement there in that intersection, but people will be able to go down to First Avenue or Second Avenue and make that turn, and then and then loop around if they'd like to. Alderman Sipa, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Lyman, um, some of this I'm, I'm hoping you may have a little uh, information on something you said early on that the bridge. Uh, coloring is going to match the 
the work that's being done in phase one, which kind of got me thinking as we are hoping to let bids and start construction on phase one, is there any chance that any of that work might overlap or hinder one another as we're moving forward with flood control and bridge okay. reconstruction? Great question. Mr. President, Alderman uh, Sitma. Yes, there will need to be some um, uh, very closely uh, coordinated uh, coordination between uh, whoever gets the contract for phase one there uh, because some of that work um, could overlap very easily. As there is a pump station on the northwest side of the Broadway Bridge project um, and access for the two cranes that you see right there, one of them will most likely need to be for at least a period of time, if not for a substantial period of time, be in that same area where that $25, $30 million pump station is designed to go. Um, so they'll have to play nice in the same sandbox, um, but those coordination efforts uh, can be done. Thank you, President Chancellor. Uh, Mr. Lyman, uh, yesterday I was fortunate to ride my bike underneath the Broadway Bridge uh, to come to Committee of the Whole, and um, as this moves and they get the slab to the uh, north completed, when, when will the, uh, the soonest for the pedestrian path to uh, become available again. Do you have any sense? Yeah, Mr. Uh, Mr. President and um, Alderman Strait, uh, you're referring to the bike path that's seen in the picture where the track of that enormous crane is sitting? Is that the one you're referring to on the south side of the river? Well, yesterday I was able to ride the south side, but I, the, the main bike path is on the north side of the river there that's been blocked off now since construction began. I'm going to have to, I'm drawing a blank on a, on a bike path on the north side of the river that was impacted. I, I know of a the south side. The other side of the river, basically. There's a bike path. It's fenced in right next to the Burlington Northern staging area, their parking area. I, I, it's on the south side. Oh, that's the south side. I, 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 it's, the it's on the picture. I think what you're referring to is exactly where that light pole is and the crane. It's on the south side of the river, north side of the tracks. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. Yep. Uh, that went back in place um, in the last... 10 days, uh, a temporary path there. Uh, as you can see by the picture, they had to have large equipment right there in order to pour it and to, to do the demolition. Uh, the bike path is in place. It will be working uh, as it is now through the winter. They'll have to have, again, very similar equipment on the other side in order to tear down and to um, do the new bridge on the west side. So there will be an impact uh, next year as well. But then when it's finished, the design is to put it back to the way they had it before, just like a good Boy Scout. Any other questions for Mr. Lyman? Seeing none, thank you. Okay, thank appreciate you. The appreciate the report. Um, that brings us to item 14, which is the uh, report of the airport director. Good afternoon, President Janser, Alderman. Derek, I assume these are your magic fingers working on the presentation here. Yeah, Lyman didn't put it back where it belongs, so. <laughs> so my clock hasn't started yet, right? Just make sure no, your, your time's going. <laughs> Just click that for me. Fine, I'll stand up. Sir. Uh oh. I didn't do that. Huh. Let's try 
try this. Here we go. Sorry for that. Uh, quickly, I want to talk about the uh, airport improvement grant that was awarded earlier this month uh, in the amount of $1.8 million. All of these projects, uh, I'm sure, look familiar to you because we've been talking about them for uh, some time. These are the uh, projects that the, this $1.8 million represents the FAA's 90% commitment to these projects. Uh, the other 10% are split evenly between the city and the State Aeronautics Commission. The aviation, uh, general aviation apron north is going on right now, as is the perimeter road construction. Both of those projects started yesterday, uh, and we will get to the other projects uh, in due time in the coming weeks. I want to talk briefly about the car rental contract. Um, as you know, the current car rental agreement is expiring at the end of this year, so we want to have a new agreement in place by January 1st. Uh, here is the timeline for accomplishing that. The RFP is out right now, and I hope to be able to come back to you in the November time frame with a recommendation for the new car rental contracts. Uh, the next uh, step in this is a pre-bid conference next week. We were able to um, get uh, our main runway 1331 painted this uh, over the last couple of weeks. And I, I wanted to highlight this because this is something that we have not done before. This is typically a project that gets uh, done by contract, a third party. We bid it out. The last time we did it in 2015, uh, the cost was uh, nearly $100,000, and half of that was our responsibility. If you'll recall, in 2016, we had a capital project to purchase a precision laser line painter, uh, and the city's portion of that was $12,500. The State Aeronautics Commission uh, paid for the other half of it, and with this equipment, we're able to do this in-house with our own, uh, our own folks. So uh, we paid uh, about $7,600 for materials, uh, of course, the, the time uh, included from our folks, uh, and we're able to do this in-house, and so you know, we saved about $91,000. Um, half of that would, would have been paid for by the Air and Arts Commission, but the other half would have come from the city. And so this is something that, uh, that I'm really proud of, and I just want to really commend our staff that um, did this. They uh, voluntarily changed their shifts. Most of this work was done overnight after most of the commercial traffic had closed because obviously we had to close the runway every night. And uh, this is not something that they had done before. This was a new, you know, a new thing for them and you will see that it is not a casual paint job. Uh, everything there is uh, there for a reason. It's a specific color, it's a specific width, it's a specific angle. Uh, there are reflective beads mixed in with the paint at a uh, certain concentration, and they were able to, to accomplish this uh, and did a really fabulous job. Now getting to the numbers for uh, July. Uh, July was our uh, third month in a row of increased boardings. It was our second month in a row of record boardings for the year, uh, and we're right on track kind of where we were with uh, 2016 in July. Load factor, uh, a little bit weak, but consistent with uh, the June year over year for the last two years, and still above 72%, uh, which is, uh, um, from an industry standard, is still very strong. Rental car activity uh, is, uh, was a bit worrisome for July. Uh, you'll see that although up from June, uh, year over year, it is, uh, is a little bit weak. Uh, so $450,000. And as I mentioned earlier, we're in the process of uh, looking at uh, the new contracts for 2018. Concession sales was very strong. It was uh, our best month year to date and uh, was the same as July of 2016 and above our uh, minimum annual guarantee target for the month of July. Parking revenue um, was, uh, was strong, uh, up um, year over year and uh, relatively flat to last month. 
with that, I would be happy to entertain any questions you may have. Alderman Wolski. Chairman Johnson, thank you. Uh, Rick, um, the, the term on the, the car rental agreements, is that uh, that's a multi-year term, I expect? Uh, yes, President Janser Alderman Wolski, the last uh, term was um, five years. Uh, and so this was bid originally or went into effect in uh, 2012. Um, the concern there, of course, is we are in a much different uh, business climate in 2012 than we uh, are in uh, 2017, 2018. Uh, so um, we're we're working hard to make sure that we can get some good, some good bids in there. Is the expectation for a, a similar term in the future? And then, uh, as a follow-up, that you can kind of grab these both. But the um, my expectation is 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 the leases we're going to get back this time are probably a little different, a little less than than what we got last time around. I didn't take a close look at this section of the budget, did, but but was that reflected uh, an expectation that we're going to see a little less in that revenue side? Uh, President Janser, Alderman Wolski, yes it was. Uh, we anticipate a, a lower mag uh, than we've had for the past five years, and I did reflect that in the uh, 2018 budget. Okay. Um, just a quick question, that, mm -hmm. and uh, this maybe would have been a re little reflected had uh, number 11 been on our agenda tonight. Have, uh, has that individual company been made aware of President Janser Alderman Sitma, yes, they were called personally um, Thank to, you. to make sure that they were aware of the bidding and the schedule. Okay. Very good. Um, any, any other questions for the airport director? All right. Seeing Thank you very much. Have a nice evening. Rick. Um, I believe that. Oh, Alderman Walski, do you have uh, something? I, I do have a, one quick thing to add here. Not, right, right, not, okay. not for you, but. Uh, over the last uh, month, uh, Derek and I, uh, uh, I asked him to take a closer look at the, uh, I guess, the terms of service agreement with YouTube, which is the service he's stri streaming this meeting through right now. And, and some things have changed. And, and long story short, uh, we now have the ability to directly embed or link uh, this live stream onto Facebook personal web pages, things like that. Uh, and so I, I kind of went through a little test run here during the meeting. And in order to improve engagement, maybe get more eyes on these meetings, um, at, at the outset of these in the future, it would make sense uh, for those of us who have, uh, you know, alderman pages and personal pages, maybe business pages, whatever. Uh, but if we, if we bring that link out of YouTube and put it into Facebook, I think we can probably dramatically improve and increase our reach on the number of people who are catching this information. So I just kind of wanted to call attention to that. I wanted to say well done, Derek, because uh, uh, I think this will, uh, it, it's a step in a good direction in terms of transparency, communication, all those things. So. Okay, thank you. Technology is good. Um, any other comments? If not, we're at the end of our agenda and the meeting's adjourned.